Welcome to Commissioner's Corner. I'm Naja Mawasi. Exciting changes are happening throughout Boston's neighborhoods. The proof is in the streets and in backyards. Will these changes benefit you? Chris Osgood, Chief of Streets, Transportation and Sanitation, is back with us to discuss these issues and more. Chief Osgood helps lead the public works in transportation departments to deliver exceptional city services, build great streets, and implement a transportation plan that works for everyone. Chief Osgood, thank you so much for coming. You kept your promise. It's wonderful to be back. You are back. Yes, yeah. What's going on? The streets. Go Boston 2030 is full in full swing. That's right. There's a bunch of uh, policies and That's projects. Correct. That's correct. Talk to us about it. What can, what, what's happening? That's sure, so been a couple years updated. ago, uh, the mayor released Go Boston 2030. Mm -hmm. As a reminder, that's the city's comprehensive transportation plan for the city of Boston, really focused on achieving three big goals that we know our constituents care a lot about. Unlocking economic growth, increasing equity, and improving resiliency in the city. And we know that in order to actually achieve those big goals, we need to have uh, our streets work in a different way. We need our streets to be safer for folks who are walking and biking, uh, our streets be much more reliable for folks who are driving or who are on buses, and just have good access to quality transportation choices more equitably spread across the entire city of Boston. We've been doing a lot over the course of this last year uh, since we last talked, uh, focused on those three areas of safety, reliability, and accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, just to touch on, on one of them related to reliability, uh, this past spring the mayor created Boston's first ever transit team. This is a team that is focused specifically on working with the MBTA to make our streets work better for all the folks who are riding on buses. And the reason that's so important for us we know that we're not going to be able to reduce congestion unless we get more people to be able to take transit. And folks are not going to be able to take, will not choose transit unless transit is more reliable. There are way too many people who are, who are stuck on buses or who are going uh, too slowly. And so there's some work we need to do as the city to make our streets work better for buses. Create our transit team, and that transit team has been hard at work uh, creating some dedicated bus lanes across the city of Boston in key corridors to help uh, thousands of people have better commutes every single day. Mm -hmm. And you also, there's, uh parking meters that you kind of change some correct. policies yep. around. Yep. So uh, two years ago we piloted uh, sort of a different approach to uh, managing parking metered spaces in the city of Boston. The city mm -hmm. has roughly 9,000 spaces in the city that have parking meters. They're largely in sort of in the downtown core, uh, often places that are well served by transit. And what we saw was there's such incredible demand for on-street parking that people were doing what, frankly, any one of us would do, which is circle the block, hunting for that metered parking space, because if you price it as they were priced at $1.25 an hour, it simply made sense to kind of hunt for that parking space. What we've seen in a lot of other cities is that if you adjust the price of your parking meters, you actually get uh, a, a better managed curb. You get less double parking, you get less illegal parking, you get less illegal parking in loading zones. So. Uh, two years ago, we piloted something in the Back Bay and the South Boston waterfront, and last month we actually took that pilot uh, to scale across all 9,000 meter parking spaces, where we've essentially adjusted the price of uh, the hourly rate for parking meters in the city, knowing that based upon the research we've done and the tests that we did, that's going to mean just a better driving experience and parking experience and road experience for everybody no matter how they move. We've seen illegal parking go down, so fewer people parking in, uh, in residential parking spaces illegally. We've seen less illegal parking in loading zones, which means that commercial trucks can get to the curb rather than doing loading in, in travel lanes, and we've seen less double parking in some of the core areas of our city. Um, all of this is, means we've got better managed streets, better flowing traffic and transportation, and as part of that, um, we've actually seen an a increase in revenue which the mayor has rededicated back into the things that our residents most want. So we're reconstructing more sidewalks, we're retiming more lights, and we've been able to do things like create that transit team and invest in some road safety projects across the city. Excellent. Uh, recycling. The yes. city is putting a very big emphasis on recycling. Why? So. Uh, this past year, uh, the mayor had convened something called the Zero Waste Advisory Committee, um, or the, the ZWAC, as it was known, the Zero Waste Advisory Committee. What is it Committee. called? The ZWAC, ZWAC, Z -W -A -C, the ZWAC yes. okay. Um, uh, and that, that committee uh, put forward a set of recommendations about how we can increase uh, recycling and composting uh, in the city of Boston. Uh, in our homes in the city, we generate around 240,000 tons of trash uh, recycling or compost every single year. And we know that the more of it that we are able to recycle or compost, the lower the emissions are that we're going to release and the fewer natural resources we're going to have to consume um, to be able to, sort of to, to run our households. 
Um, so the Zero Waste Advisory Committee came up with a whole set of recommendations around how to improve recycling and composting in the city. You were co-chair of that. I was. Okay. I had the great pleasure of working first with Austin Blackman okay. uh, and now with uh, Chief Chris Cook. Uh, okay. And a really terrific cross-section of business leaders and community leaders and institutional leaders uh, to create that plan. Um, some new things that residents are going to see uh, because of the work of, uh, of the Zero Waste Advisory Committee uh, and the mayor's subsequent investment. Um, one is we are going to uh, put in place a new textile uh, recycling program in the city. Roughly 6% of all of the trash that we throw away are, are, are sort of household textiles, um, mm -hmm. old, uh, old, old shirts or linens or what have you. Uh, and there's been some models in other cities about how to get more of those out of the waste stream and uh, uh, get them recycled instead. So coming this fall, we expect to launch a new textile recycling program, which will go hand in hand with uh, an effort which has been uh, led out of the Public Works Department in collaboration <coughs> with the Environment Department uh, and with some great leadership from our Department of Innovation and Technology and our pub uh, Public Information Officer, Chris Coakley, um, to push a Recycling Right campaign to help mm -hmm. all residents understand what the best way is to recycle so that we can all do that thing which we all want to do, which is to mm -hmm. create less trash and to have more of the things that we do create get recycled. And there's an opportunity um, to be educated on that as Absolutely. well. There will be what, there'll be classes or what is, how does so that work? So there's a whole set of outreach which we're doing right now uh, through the Recycle Right campaign, uh, which right now is a whole series of billboards and outreach and education. Uh, we'll be taking some of that actually into the community oh, sort okay. of community meetings from, uh, from there. Um, one of the things we encourage all residents to do, uh, there is an app that is available. If you have a smartphone, it's called the Trash Day app. You can download it, and within that app, there's a directory. So if you don't know whether uh, something is necessarily recyclable, you can look up in that app uh, what is or isn't uh, recyclable in the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. Encourage all folks to download the Trash Day app. So then that, now that brings us to composting, okay? okay. The, the city is doing, having some big efforts on composting. Right. Composting is a great way for all of us to do our part to help save this planet. It reduces waste, makes us less dependent on landfills, and decreases greenhouse gas emissions. Here's Susan Casino's head of Boston's recycling program to show us how we can compost in our own neighborhoods. In order for compost to happen, uh, it needs uh, nitrogen, carbon, air, and water. Leaf and yard waste and the food waste are all the sources of carbon and nitrogen. Uh, the carbon is easily as described as the brown material, so your dried leaves or wood chips would be the source of carbon. And then your source of nitrogen is also described as your green stuff, which would be your uh, kitchen scraps um, uh, or your plantings, uh, after they've been harvested and still green, you throw them in the compost bin. You can get a harvest in 12 months. For people who don't have backyards that can't fit a compost bin in there, they can utilize the community compost bins. And you can see right on here, we have what can go in the bins. So food scraps like your rice, pasta, breads, uh, fruit and vegetables, coffee grounds, eggshells, those are all items that can be composted. And what happens after this gets filled? Uh, the public works crews come by, empty it, they bring it over to a larger food um, and orga organics compactor, which once that gets filled up, it gets taken over to our composting facility in Saugus. And that's how the cycle works. So it was interesting to see what makes a good composting pile. Um, vegetables, grass uh, cutting parts, fruit waste, tea bags, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I also found a cardboard, uh, egg cardboard boxes as well. Um, so what, what are the different ways that we can do it inside of our home sure. if we don't have a backyard? Sure. So there's a couple of different options that the city is providing. Uh, there's two right now. Uh, one is uh, to encourage folks who may have that space uh, outdoors to be able to purchase or access a compost bin. Uh, and that you can find out more on uh, the city's website. The other option which we've been providing for the last several years is a program called Project Oscar 
which is indeed named for the Sesame Street character, uh, mm -hmm. Oscar the Crouch. Uh, mm -hmm. And these That's are a cool. set of, yeah, exactly, these are a set of <laughs> uh, community locations where residents can take food scraps to if they want to, uh, if they want to compost, but don't necessarily have that space or that interest in having a compost bin at their house. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. locations in Jamaica Plain, in the North End, in East Boston, in Brighton, and in fact, right outside of City Hall where anyone who's interested in can bring food scraps. That food scraps, those food scraps are then taken actually to uh, a farm on the North Shore uh, where they are uh, converted essentially into a soil additive that, can, uh, that helps uh, create sort of richer farmland uh, uh, across the region. Um, that is sort of what we've been doing over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, up ahead though, we are looking to significantly increase our composting efforts in the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that uh, about 30% of what we are currently throwing away as a city, what we currently put into a trash bag, is actually compostable. Uh, whether that is uh, leaf waste or yard waste of grass clippings of one form or another, or food scraps. So for things that are uh, leaf waste or yard waste or grass clippings, uh, starting on July 1, we've actually increased the number of opportunities that residents have to be able to uh, get that yard waste to a compost facility. Uh, we have not only increased the number of curbside collections uh, to 20 weeks per year, but for at least an additional another 20 weeks, so 40 weeks in total, residents will have the opportunity to be able to get that, uh, those gra grass clippings to the right place within mm -hmm. the city. Uh, we have a composting facility on American Legion Highway uh, that residents can be able to take uh, their uh, grass clippings or yard waste to. All of that uh, yard waste material then gets composted and is actually provided back to community gardeners in the city of Boston at no cost to be able to help them do the community garden that they love to do every single day. So we've been able to, over the course of this year, expand the amount of opportunities for people to compost yard waste. We are also going to be starting, uh, hopefully this fall, a new subscription-based food waste program. So residents who want to do uh, food waste compost, get uh, food scraps out of their house into a compost bin, uh, we'll be able to sign up for a program uh, for a small cost to be able to have that food waste then collected and appropriately composted uh, and returned uh, uh, to the earth or to another product uh, in, uh, in a way which they most want. Absolutely great. That's it's great. Fantastic. Streets. Yes. Uh, sidewalks. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of projects. Construction. Um, <clears throat> Ruggle Street, Commonwealth Ave yeah. um, in the third and fourth phase. Talk, yeah. to, talk to us about that. Sure, so the mayor has put uh, more money into the capital budget for reconstructing our sidewalks, our streets, and our mm -hmm. bridges uh, than we've ever had before, uh, all through the broader Imagine Boston plan, which, uh, which he has put forward. I would say our biggest area of investment right now uh, is actually in our bridges. The city of Boston owns roughly 40 bridges across the city. Uh, of those 40 over uh, the last two years and the two years ahead, we will be significantly investing in the design or reconstruction of seven of those. Um, two of those projects, uh, the Mass Over Com Bridge, Mass Over Commonwealth Ave Bridge in the Back Bay, and the Alfred Street Bridge uh, connecting Charlestown essentially and Everett. Um, those are significantly done. The North Washington Street Bridge, which is one of the largest bridge construction projects in the city's history, connecting Charlestown and the North End, is underway, as are some repairs to the Dalton Street Bridge and the Dana Ave Bridge in Hyde Park. And then there's two very signature bridges that we are going through the design process on and the permitting process on. The Northern Avenue Bridge uh, between mm -hmm. the South Boston Waterfront and downtown, uh, as well as the Long Island Bridge. Um, and with the Long Island Bridge, uh, we are re uh, re re replacing the superstructure for that bridge, mm -hmm. uh, which was taken down in 2014, uh, with the intent of being able to open up a recovery campus on Long Island so that we can strengthen the overall region's continuum yeah. of care, which is a high priority for the city. Uh, and by being able to reconstruct uh, that superstructure for the bridge, we know we'll be able to reopen that recovery campus on Long Island. Excellent. So people can go back and forth. Great, great. Three ribbon cuttings. Yes. Yeah, yes. congratulations Thank you. on that. Thank you. Tell us about the accomplishment. I mean, lots of credit to the team and lots of credit to the community uh, who work incredibly hard on a whole set of projects. Um, one which uh, is an area that you touched on, uh, uh, Madison Park. Um, so we recently did a, a ribbon cutting uh, in, of the streets and sidewalks uh, in Madison Park. It is one of actually five major projects totaling over $40 million of investment around Dudley Square. So the project which is already complete uh, mm -hmm. is the reconstruction of the roads uh, and, uh, and sidewalks in Madison Park. We've also done some sidewalk work uh, around Reed Street and Harrison Avenue. Mm -hmm. Next up is going to be uh, about a $12 million project reconstructing the uh, streets and sidewalks around Dudley Square itself. Uh, followed by uh, a full reconstruction of Melnia Cass, probably around a $25 million uh, project going all the way from Mass Ave uh, to Tremont Street. 
And then the final project is one that you also mentioned, which is a redesign and reconstruction of Ruggles Street, so forming that, that connection essentially between uh, Dudley Square uh, and the Columbus Ave and Orange Line Corridor. And so that project is, uh, is in design, and we're having a number of community meetings to make sure that we get that design right and really reflect the interest of the residents. It's a lot going on in the city. It is city. a lot going on in the city. I mean, when you drive around, you see it, but when you actually go on the site and you're reading all this information, it's, you're getting the background yeah. information, it's a lot. It's a lot of good information to know. There is a lot going on, and I'm very fortunate to have a fantastic yeah, team that yeah. actually does a, a great job every streets. day. I know, exactly. And the uh, Public Works Department, yeah. They do a lot. They do. Uh, they are a 24-7 operation and frankly every day make me proud. I mean mm -hmm. every day they are mm -hmm. out there uh, really responding and to those Gina? things. Residents care. Oh. Well, Gina, Gina, Gina has been a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic leader for uh, the Boston Transportation Department uh, for years in many different capacities. The the city of Austin has now uh, uh, asked her to come and, mm -hmm. and help run things there. So we're fortunate to have Greg Rooney oh, uh, step in okay. as, our, as our acting transportation director. Oh, okay. And Greg has uh, uh, been a fantastic partner and leader. Uh, and so we're, we're very fortunate to have a strong leadership in BTD as well. Great. So college students are returning. That's correct. Um, how are we prepared to deal with the trash. Sure. So there's a huge amount of uh, coordination that happens across city departments and across neighborhood groups to really prepare for that uh, end of August, beginning of September uh, move in process. Mm -hmm. uh, so our uh, public works department uh, spends a lot of time uh, putting together what is a, a comprehensive plan to make sure that we are present and supportive and to help uh, all residents with that transition. Uh, that means uh, that we have uh, sort of crews where they need to be and really coordinating with landlords to make uh, sort of the recycling and trash process as seamless as possible. Uh, we know that this requires a degree of patience for all uh, residents in the city and all people who are moving in or moving out. Um, so we do encourage folks, if there are issues that arise, uh, to let us know through the what's called the BOSS 311 app. Uh, it's an app that people can download and they can report issues associated with student move-in as well as any other issues they may see in their neighborhoods, potholes, streetlights out, et cetera. Uh, and so we do encourage folks, download that app, let us know if there's anything that we can do, but this is certainly uh, something which is a major focus for the city and particularly our departments. And I would say for new students that are moving in, uh, one of the things that we're very focused on is to encourage people as they come uh, into the city to be able to uh, explore the city and explore the many fantastic ways we have to be able to get around Boston. Absolutely. Um, one of those ways is our Blue Bikes program. Blue Bikes is we the bike share right, program. The bikes. Exactly. Uh, so. Uh, last year, we were able to add 50 new uh, blue bike stations in more neighborhoods across the city. This year, we're adding another 50, so we're getting more and more of the city covered with blue bike stations, meaning that it's easier for folks uh, to be able to bike across Boston. Do you see more of that? We do. So last year, we actually had our highest ridership ever on the blue bike program, 1.7 million trips. We are going to crush that number uh, this year. We have already set multiple times in the course of 2019 our our single day sort of highest usage levels uh, for the Blue Bike oh, yeah, program. And it. beautiful days like this, you get tons of people who are, who are out. And it's, and it's a great way to get around the city. Uh, and it also means that it's likely a, a trip that is taken by bike rather than necessarily uh, taken in a car, which does relieve congestion for everybody, whether they're behind the wheel, uh, on a bus, uh, or any That's other way. That's key. That's it the is. biggest thing, leaving that congestion. It is a huge focus yeah, for us. Less stress. It's less stress, <laughs> less congestion. It is, it is critical. And we know that if we can make our streets better for walking and biking, if we can make transit more reliable, we're going to be able to reduce congestion and reduce emissions in Boston. Yes, thank you so much My for pleasure. coming back. You kept your Always promise. Always a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank Anytime. you. If you would like to learn more about what we discussed or how you can get involved, please visit boston.gov forward slash public works or send an email to publicworks at boston.gov. You can also always follow updates on Twitter too at Boston PWD. And as always, thank you for watching Commissioner's Corner. I'm Naja Mawasi.